Hi, my name is Rich. I record and play in a band called The Sound of Machines. In this video, I'll show you how I made this little guy. It's a tape cassette recorder with some other neat features. Take a look. First, it's got a variable speed control knob that can take the pitch to extremes on either side. Then there's this overdrive type effect that you can turn on and off. And it's dialed up with this knob. And then there are these mute buttons for tempo-based playing abilities. Depending on the position of this switch, the signal is either muted when this button is pressed, or unmuted when this button is pressed. By the way, these circuits interrupt the headphone out jack, but not the internal speaker. Let me take a sec to warn you though that since these units are getting a little old, um, they won't all be perfectly operational. I've lost a few in the process of modifying these, and a couple that I got had faulty motors right off the bat. If you find these on eBay, um, make an offer of $10. The seller might ignore your offer, or if you're lucky, they'll accept it. If you plan on making one of these, I'd suggest buying two, if you can get two of them for 10 bucks a piece, um, just to cover your bases. So let me show you how it's made. The first thing I do is I prepare the project box with all the buttons. I made a little template for the button layout. But of course, since I'm doing this by hand, the buttons will always be a bit off-center. It doesn't bother me too much. Here's how I laid out my version, but of course it's up to you to make yours as you wish. And next, we'll get the unit open and take a peek inside. So the first thing I do is to remove this ground wire so I can separate the cover from the back. And you'll also want to just move this shielding paper out of the way while you work. As most cassette players do, these guys have an easily accessible trim pot that's used to fine-tune the playback speed. I actually clip these off pin by pin. I found that trying to desolder and unbend these pins can really mess up the board. We're going to replace this with a potentiometer that has less resistance. Now I move to soldering. For the wire connections, I made this little schematic for reference. I'll link to this below. I put some liquid nails on the project box and fastened it to the cassette player with a few short screws. It's important to place these in a spot that won't bump against any of the button terminals when the lid is closed. I also drill a hole for feeding the wires from the circuit board through to the box. Now I move on to the board connections on the cassette player. And one by one, get all the connections soldered up according to the diagram. I label all my wires with a number that corresponds to the wiring schematic, and I feed them through to the project enclosure box. And this is the part that tends to take the longest for me. I tend to triple check my work and still somehow get something wrong. By the way, I'm heat shrink sealing all these connections, but it's not absolutely necessary. Now it's time to fit the unit back together. I will warn you that these units are a bit finicky around the battery compartment and where the headphone jack area is. If you're lucky, the unit should be fully functional. So that's it, and of course you can um, get some pretty cool results when effects are added. And also if you like the DIY kind of sound that you get out of instruments like this, check out the last Sound of Machines album called The Narrow Passage. The link is in the description below. 
thanks for watching. Let me know if you made one of these, guys. I'd be curious to see how you use it in your own music. Bye.